Hello Bonsai friends, John Machowski here again uh, to do another little demonstration of uh, the initial design on uh, this time a dwarf Alberta spruce Picea glauca conica it's a great time of year to do them spruce can take more branch bending and stuff like that after mid-August into the fall and it's a beautiful October Sunday morning as I do this in addition to everything else, this is the time of year where you sometimes can get bargains. So I got this at one of the large home centers at half price. So its initial price was $35, and so I got it for about $17. So, as always, what we're looking for is a robust, heavy single trunk, if you can find it. And this one's verging on two inches thick at the bottom. If you start parting the branches on these, you'll find that a lot of them wind up forking into two and three trunks as you go up. And that can be a bit tricky for design. Not impossible. I've done a number of twin trunks that I thought were very pleasing. But in this case, I was specifically searching for something with a single trunk. And uh, so this uh, brief demo is going to uh, give you an idea of how you uh, get started with an initial design on this kind of material. So you got your tree in your workspace going to get rid of that tag in a moment. First thing you're going to do is try to determine where your best front is. And to do that, I'm going to clear away a lot of the loose soil down here. You can actually see it's been pulled back just maybe just by the way it was taken care of on one side. We're going to look for uh, possible visible roots on the surface that could be used to advantage. And then we're going to start thinning out low branches that we know are not ultimately going to be part of the final design of this tree. And from there we will start uh, figuring out uh, branching pattern and uh, ultimate height of the tree and so on. Uh, people with experience will will know right away what I'm talking about, but um, there are a lot of branches in let's say the bottom third of this tree that will never wind up being used in the ultimate design because what we will finally be doing is using branches higher up and pulling them down into a down bending position which is more like the growth pattern of a mature tree and so we don't need anything in the lower at least quarter and so I'm gonna clear that stuff out now and it'll make it easier for me to figure out the rest of the design as I move on so now this is just this took that was one minute of work removing all that stuff at the bottom has really clarified <laughs> where this tree is at, okay? And even more is gonna come out. I mean, there's actual dead branches in here. I'm gonna thin those out. So the next time you see, the next time I come back to this, you will see me have, uh, I will have done a little bit more refining of uh, just getting rid of the stuff that's not gonna be in there. So I pointed this out in other little video clips. Um, I think one of the problems that newbies have a lot of times when they're working with some of their first projects is they get overwhelmed with all the branch placement choices. They don't know what to do. And one of the things I've tried to underscore is you can eliminate a lot of the confusion by going in, first of all, and removing dead stuff, dead branches. They're certainly not going to be a part of your design, especially if they're little, little dead branches to just fill out the inside and a lot of conifers have a lot of dead material inside they shade their own branches out and those things die back so um, I always spend a couple minutes just meticulously looking for every little dead thing and clipping it out and you'd be surprised how much it airs out the, uh, the the growth pattern and you can you can make more decisions more easily then so we'll do that for a moment if you if you become initially overwhelmed with the work in front of you um, one trick is just to start at the bottom and work from the lower branches, spin the tree around and do every bottom branch and then go to the next tier and work on those and you just work your way up which is what I'm doing. I have just removed a branch that was here. Let's see if I can show it to you well. Um, it was going this way and pointing rather up at sort of um, like at one o'clock. It was, it was going to be a difficult branch to change position on and there were others close by they were in a more horizontal position. So I cut that up pointing branch out 
And um, I also want to indicate to you that um, with this species, with spruce in general, but the the uh, Picea glauca conica, this, this camera does not really like to zoom in too close with all this. Um, you want to excavate out some of these cuts a little bit, dig them in a little bit, because this tree will heal with like warty scars sometimes. So you want to sort of excavate your basal branch cuts like this one here. I sort of not only cut the branch, but excavated a little bit hollow, slightly hollow, because otherwise I might get a bump there. The new bark might give me a bump. So again, going to go around and around, looking for, you can see the dead bits in here and clearing them out till I've gone all the way up the tree. So at this point I've really, really thinned it out. You could really see through it. And uh, the top is very, very dense. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of small but live branches uh, fighting for supremacy in there. But it gives me a lot to work with. Now, one of the things I can do at this point is reduce the height of the tree to give the thickness of the trunk a little more impact. So I'm going to consider that, and as part of that consideration, I really need to know where the front is, because the final front, because I can use one of these branches to be the new apex. But if I do that, I need to know which way I'm cutting the top so that the, the new desired apex is hiding that cut. So I, I need to figure out which way is front. And to do that, i got to go back to the base and look at the possibilities with the trunk I've got down here. You'll notice it flares out quite a bit wider down the bottom than it originally looked, and it was all covered before by soil. So, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of minutes to look at this and figure that out before I take my next step. One of the details that um, complicates my decision is if you look at all these branches down here, they're all flexible enough to be moved into a horizontal position, but there is a branch here that is growing at a much uh, stiffer angle. This, this one right here is coming out of the tree at sort of 11 o'clock, and it's, it's making its move toward being a second apex, really. This one probably has to go, and if I take it out, I've got a big bald space here of about six inches on this side with no branches. So I need to consider if I really want to remove this. If I do, that's going to really impact where the front of this tree is. So that's one of the things I have to think about as I go forward. Okay, so by turning this pot around, spinning it around, and considering the movement, the base, all the things that will contribute to this final design. I've sort of settled on this as where there's kind of a neat line for the tree. And having done that, I'm going to start removing branches in a big way. Um, this branch here is coming out. This branch here is coming out. And then that upgrowing one I showed you before is coming out. And I think I'm going to be able to get my apex round about here and take about six inches off the top of the tree. Um, at some point, you just make these decisions and you, you go with them. And uh, what happens if you cut off the stuff that you wish you kept? That happens sometimes. Um, now, I don't have to make these decisions and act on them right now, but I think I'm going to. Having started the cuts, you can now see other things that are going to come up choice-wise. Um, there are many, many branches coming out in close proximity, and so you want to take advantage of the branches with the best forking pattern close to the trunk. If you've got a choice between a thick branch that is uh, suitable dimensions for what you're doing and little thin noodly branches that maybe not as much, then you take out the ones that are not uh, as useful as others, and you, you don't wind up keeping every branch that's there. You, you make some selections. This is also the right time to make deadwood from formerly live branches if you're going to do it. Um, do it when the bark is fresh and it's just coming off a live branch, because if you wait till it dries out in a few weeks or months, the bark doesn't come off very well. If you do it when the, when the branches are fresh, 
the bark peels off like a banana skin. All right. So you keep some of that in mind as you go. To create dead wood, you cut whatever branch you're going to cut. You remove the bark as I was just demonstrating. Let me see if I can lighten this up a bit. That help? Guess not. And um, it's a simple trick. You take your, you have your, your blunt cut. You pulled the bark off. You take your cutters and you wedge them into the wood grain and just peel back, just roll back with the cutters and you get a natural strips, strips of wood grain and um, if you're persistent and patient you start to get what looks like a natural broken tip to a branch. Okay, at this point I'm going to start wiring branches. I'm not going to go crazy wiring, but I want to get them more into position so that I can more easily make choices about the branches higher up and higher up. It's going to help me to get them more or less in position so I can see where the spaces I have to fill and, and, and design into. All right, the light is a little challenging this time of day, but I'm going to do it from here. Um, so this is sort of the front I'm working with, and so if this is going to be my first branch down here, this is going to be my second branch down here. So if this is an important branch for me later, I've got this one here that's directly opposite. And even though this is a nice healthy branch, um, it's in a bad placement. You don't want them right across from each other. It's an unappealing aesthetic. So this is coming out, even though I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to fill it with, but it's got to go. So we've got branch here, we've got a branch here. We don't have anything here. There is a small branch here that with one or two seasons of encouragement will be good enough for that spot. But we now also have something jutting forward toward us and I'm gonna cut that back considerably and decide whether I want it at all. And uh, if I was gonna be very bold, that could be the top of the whole tree, but I'm not gonna be that bold. I I'm gonna give myself a little more height, I think. Okay, so we've revealed another issue with this tree, which is that from here all the way up to there, there is no taper in diameter at all in this trunk. Gosh, you barely see it because of the light. A little better there, okay? It's, it's like the width of a cigar straight up. And um, it's may give me the, imp the feeling that I might take the top off and, and make this in over here into an apex and zigzag it a little bit and do something, oh, an attempt to be clever because otherwise I've got this weird lollipop at the top, which is, I don't think, ever going to look great. As you see here, it just goes and goes and goes and straight, straight as anything from here to here and doesn't change in width at all. So I think I'm going to try a thing with it, see how it goes. Okay, well that's sort of it for right now. I know these things can look a little bit like Charlie Brown trees for the first season or two, but I think you see where I'm going with it. Um, I've taken that top way down um, and ratcheted one of the... See, I'm trying to shade from the, the, the glare of the afternoon sun. Um, but you can see the, the general form that I'm going for there. It's going to be a nice, robust, short little tree. The, um, the, those long branches down the bottom that just seem so noodly will bud back very well. It take maybe two seasons and you'll start to get some really tight growth pads. And uh, now it's just for me to make sure the tree is healthy for the next couple growing seasons. And uh, then, then we'll be talking about repotting it into something a little more artistically uh, favorable. Okay. Picea glauca conica, dwarf Alberta spruce.